and welcome. I've got this nice little microphone here, uh, which Gunis is going to take in a second. Uh, welcome to the first Tuesday discussion of the current semester. Some of you know this has been going on for a long time. We have environmental experts every Tuesday at 4 o'clock uh, who talk about practice in environment. Uh, my name is Christoph Mauch. I'm the director of the Rachel Carson Center, and I'm moderating and convening this little session together with Dr. Gesa Lüdecke, who is the director of graduate programs at the Rachel Carson Center. It's my pleasure to introduce Gunes Seifer today. I will keep it short because we're a little late, even though Gunes deserves a really long introduction. But let me just say this, um, and actually Gunes uh, has brought um, two of her uh, yeah, Lu Lucian and, uh, and Stephanie, two of her uh, interns with her today, so I'm, I'm welcoming <laughs> them as well. <clears throat> I would, I would uh, just like to tell you that Gunis, we've known each other for quite some time, but it's each time you turn around, she started a new, has started a new business, a new startup. It is really, really amazing. It's always innovative, sustainable, ideas that others would not necessarily come up with. Um, I think her first one was the Mami Kreisel that quickly reached almost a million people in Munich and the area, uh, which was um, like a circular economy business uh, there where she realized, you know, what happens to baby clothes? You know, we're throwing them away. They're only used for a few months. Can't we turn it into something much more sustainable? The next thing was she started a kita uh, called Karl and Liesel. <laughs> Uh, which is now, I think, has been, has been imitated all over and uh, a very innovative, sustainable type of kita. Maybe she talks about it, but today we invited her because of the most recent invention, uh, and that's called the community kitchen here in Munich. And uh, while the community kitchen is something that you'll talk about, uh, I heard just in passing that it's not just a kitchen, not just some other innovative, sustainable thing, but it's also attached to it is 42,000 square meters of space that she's using for cultural and social events. So um, I don't know how to describe her. I could tell you more. I could tell you that she's a member of the plenary of the uh, Munich um, Chamber of Commerce, for instance. Many such things, I could tell you that, but I will stop here and just tell you that she's, many would call her a macherin, a maker. Uh, and she's probably, or certainly, she's certainly Munich's most prominent and innovative eco-social entrepreneur. So join me in welcoming Gunnar Seifert. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God, now I just can't disappoint you. <laughs> My name is Gunish. Gunish means sun in Turkish, so whenever you forget my name, you can just look it up in a Turkish dictionary. And today I will talk about the things that I love the most, finding solutions on all the problems we have. And I will talk a little bit, I know I don't have so much time, so sorry for press pressing a little bit. Uh, I will talk about why I think that social and eco business models are the future business models in the world. And let's start with that, what the motivation behind social and eco-entrepreneurship is. Usually business track revenue, profit, and ROI, return on investment. Sustainable businesses track that and more. And this is something to understand because usually the, the first, I would say, generation of social and eco-entrepreneurs, they were always charity. It was always so cute what you're doing. You're doing something nice to the people. And perhaps you have the luck that you get a little bit of money to don't get bankrupt totally. But the modern generation of social and eco-entrepreneurs, they understand, hey, this is what helps me to really get a spreading, to really make a sustainable business. Why is that happening? You perhaps all know the Maslow uh, Pyramid about what, what you, you are, where you are. And now if you look at the society from a systemic level, I'm not talking perhaps about the countryside in Africa or Turkey or Germany, but if you look at the cities, people went above a little bit. So they ha don't have the problem about where do I live, what do I eat, but now they want more. They want to express themselves. This was how people worked 
um, in the early stages. This is how people work now. So if you really understand that uh, co uh, conservative business models, what do they do? They have on the employees level increasing burnout, depression, a lot of money that you need to make a team building and uh, assessment uh, training and whatever building um, and, and, and development. And then on the customer side, you, you don't know, perhaps whenever you need support on a technical product, you will get frustrated because when it's not standard, you are lost in Zendesk <laughs> in, the, in the support platforms where nobody talks to you. This happened to us in Neuperlach where the community kitchen is because this building was like a uh, um, solo for almost one year and we didn't get any posts, we didn't get any uh, uh, envelopes, nothing, no packages. And then we tried to get a response from the postal service and we didn't reach it. And then I activated my network and we talked to the CFO and two days later the problem was solved. But what can you do when you don't have the CFO in your network? Then you are just frustrated. And this is what happens. And then second is when I'm always building everything new, I need resources and they have a shortage on resources. So I'm fighting with other producers about the same resources. What about I would use resources that are already in the economy? Circular economy. What about that? And it's about climate change. Yeah, we can talk about it and we can uh, say no and deny it, it's not happening. But I have three kids. And for me, I have a responsibility to give. Yes, I will be dead one day, <laughs> but until then I want to have a fulfilling life and I want the same for other generations too. So I think these are the problems that we see. And so what happens is to solve this in a conservative business model, you have increasing costs because employees want more money because you don't give a purpose. The customers want more, want cheaper products because you don't give impact. And in the same think you need to have a lot of marketing spendings because you don't have stories to tell. And this is what happens there. So what happens is that what a lot of people think they have to be in business like that. I am better than you. But if you understand that the people are rising up, then you understand that you have to think more on humans, on employee levels. What do you expect from your from your current or coming employers? Then what do the customers expect? How can I surprise them, excite them for my product, for my service? Then how can I use resources that are already in, like waste? Waste is like gold right now. You have so many of that. You can just use it and make something valuable out of that. And what about climate protection? Because then people understand that you have an impactful business and a purpose to give. And this all comes in the SDGs. I'm very sure you all know about that. So this is something where a lot of, of companies now understand, wake up and say, oh, SDGs, yeah, let's do poverty. <laughs> and now we do some projects in poverty. We do some donations and perhaps our workers go there and make some community days and then we all feel good. And I think that's not enough. That's boring. That's really boring. I mean, I wake up and I want to have a fulfilling life. So these are my three kids. They are now a little bit older. But for me, it's always interesting to do things that I don't know yet. Because doing something that I know is boring. I want to learn something new. I want to make mistakes fast. I want to do all that as early as I can. Because when I die tomorrow, then it's done. So no. No pressure, no. Carl and Liesel, what Christoph said, was the, the first project I did uh, as an employee. It was the, the um, child care business. I didn't know anything. I was just pregnant, and that's it. <laughs> so I started, and I started with asking questions. I went everywhere in Munich and asked, like, I would like to do I'm MBA. I don't know any pedagogic things. Please help me. And people helped me, but I always had more questions after asking than before. And that was really hard. After four months, all the answers fell in place. I understood the business. And now over 100 kids are taking care every day there. We are taking uh, care of kids from one, year one till 10. And I am a consultant of kids' businesses. 
So I did that, what I did as a solution for my personal life, now it's a part of my business. Then, you're never getting big alone. So at Mummy Crisis, it was the same. Having all the stuff that your kids uh, outgrow, that are pre-loved, and you don't know where to do them, where to put them. I uh, thought about, okay, what can I do? I made a joint venture with Clyder Chrysler, now both is named Winted. And in four years, we had really 960,000 members German-wide. And I couldn't never have done that because I had in four years 50,000 euros marketing spend. That's like nothing for an IT platform German-wide. But what did I do? I founded Akita, a childcare place, so that was the story to go. All the press media loved the story. I was so bored to telling it over and over again. But so we could get into all the media without paying anything for that. And the second is, I did relationship building. So that means I, I get in touch with small influencers, really small, nobody knew them. Now they are one of the biggest ones, like Hauptstadt Mutti Block or others. We are real friends and we supported each other and grew together. And third, I invested in the community. For me, the satisfaction of the community of the people was always the most important. So giving the best service I can, sleeping less, <laughs> thinking new, that was what gave me the, the fulfilling, yeah. Then, my middle one, <laughs> I supported for two years the astronautin. The first German woman that wants to go to space. Why 11 men were in space from Germany? No women yet. If you ask the ESA, they said, hey, there was Italian women in the space. Yeah, great. <laughs> but where are the role models for our kids? Which women can say she wants to be Bundeskanzlerin? Every. But which girl can say she wants to be astronaut? No one, because there is no role model. And it was important for us to bring it into the media we did that, we did a lot of events. Um, Inza and, and Susanna, Susanna here is from Munich, um, we, they did a lot of trainings. I learned a lot about space and the next trend in space. And the most important thing is, what we invested was time. And what we got was publications in all relevant big medias. 100,000, no, 100 million, sorry, euros in press media. That means we didn't pay anything, but we knew how to tell the stories so people get excited and they wrote for free. So again, if you have a story to tell because you make an impact and you give a purpose, then you save this money and get this value. And this is my next project, this is now the smallest one, and this is my, my current uh, thing. I started to be a food saver nine years ago. I started as a private person. I just heard about it, it was exciting, it was like, wow, oh, forbidden perhaps. It was not, but I didn't know that at, at that point. And in 2017, we founded the Food Sharing Munich Foundation. In 2019, we did this food truck campaign with Mrs. Kaniba from the Bavarian uh, in Nutrition and Agriculture Ministry. She founded our whole campaign for five days. We were on five places, giving out 2,500 meals for free to show that the banana can be brown outside, but is well done inside. Because if you put that in a banana cake, nobody asked for what was outside. And this was the idea behind, not giving those things in raw, but processing them and making delicious meals, and people loved it. We were in all media that you could expect. Why we did that was that food Waste is a real, real problem. Food waste is, I don't know if you know the site, but please check it out. It's the eco bible, or the bible for every eco entrepreneur, drawdown.org, because there they have 200 scientists has found the 100 most effective climate actions. And food rescue, or better, food waste reduction, is the third most um, powerful climate action. If you have, I guess it was the two point uh, zero degree, or uh, on 1.5, the, the most effective. So if you do food saving, you're world saving. And this is interesting. And what we did now is that we founded our community kitchen in Neuperlach. We found a building out of, uh, it was an office building, it was left alone <laughs> and, and empty. And the, the 
land landlord said, okay, let's do some social thing here, something. And we applied with our community kitchen and they said, great project, please come in. What is our idea? Our idea is saving food, processing it, making delicious meals in jars, put in, uh, giving it out in the restaurant, what we have there, giving it into the supermarkets to, to sell it, and learning from all that to make containers. And with those containers that are specialized on processing rescued food, we want to enable other entrepreneurs worldwide to make green spots in their area. With 3,000 3, containers, we can reach out to the half of the world population within 13 years. And this is something where we feel, okay, doing the third most effective climate action on a scaling level, this is something that attracts us. And believe me, we are learning every day new things. We have limited competition. This is um, interesting because people are used to structure. People are used to give me a border, give me something I can see already, then I can walk. For me, it's more like what can I create and let me think if I can make it in real life, not just in my head. And the competition is really like not existing because a franchise like this with rescued food is not existing already. Restaurants, we have 3,600 restaurants in, in Munich, no one works with rescued food. And in retail, you see it's not 1% of, of um, food that is from rescued food. There's just one restaurant in Europe that works the same as we work on the, on the restaurant side, and it's in Sweden. Where is she? In Sweden, yeah. There it is, spill. <laughs> And you see, the good thing is trusting the community, leading by purpose, helps that now over 200 people are helping us to make something great out of this building. They are painting the walls, they are helping in the kitchen. Uh, all the furniture that you see here is donated. We didn't spend any euro on furniture. We have 42,000 square meters to fill in. We have 5,000 kilos from Ikea. <laughs> So we have a lot to do, yeah, so if you have time, just come in and help us, yeah. But that's not everything. Why? Carl and Liesel, the, the kindergartens that I founded, Carl Valentin is someone like, I don't know, Mario Barth in Germany, but he's already dead, so a comedian. And he said uh, several good sentences, but one that I am following is, we don't need to educate our kids, they are following anyway. So people often think, when I'm doing changing something and the world doesn't, then I don't need to change because I can't make any effect. So what they do is getting in discussions with everybody, saying, hey, please do it differently. You're doing it wrong. But you're losing a lot of energy for nothing. You get frustrated, nobody changes, and that's it. So we just stay in the status quo that we are. But investing in yourself, in your education, your motivation, in, getting, in being better in project management, in being better in communication, everything, changes the world because the power of being a role model is much, much more powerful than talking and annoying people. And this is what we try there. This is the building. Two buildings. This is not ours, but this one. It's a little bit organized like a hand. And here is our community kitchen. And now we have already filled up the, the first floor. And we are now going up in the next years and filling all this building with social offers, with educational, innovational. We want to make it a green building so everything that is planted is eatable. So schools can come and understand, whoa, this is a tomato. It looks like this and it's not in plastic anymore. So this is what we are trying. We are trying to make everything colorful, diverse as our society is. And yeah, it's all about people. I think if you take the persons, because people always talk about climate protection, and I think this is the problem. Climate protection, giving something such a big meaning, um, makes that people don't identify with that. But if people are important to me, then I want them to eat healthy food, breathe healthy air, clean air, drink clean water, and all the stuffs. So the moment that people are, are important to you, starting with yourself, you can create the best business models you, you can imagine. And that means future social and entrepreneurship is about education, first of all, in yourself, then impact and in the mindset, in the right mindset. Why am I doing this? 
because I could also just look or watch Netflix. Um, I don't want my kids to ask me, you knew it. Why didn't do, you do anything against it? I want them to ask me, how did you do that? Thank you very much. Thank you.